<laughs> um, yeah, so I think this plugin or um, this doc is using that plugin and it's using um, Identified Cloud Event Management, which is something I haven't looked into, but it makes sense that um, it, it will be something which is similar to just receiving and emitting events for IBM Cloud and any anything that maybe like triggers events in IBM Cloud or any event that happens in IBM Cloud, uh, they want to send a notification over to a sync. Yeah. So I is using the event as a Jenkins as an event source going into IBM Cloud events. Yep. And and with the event sync at the CDF, there are certainly people who are very involved in that who work at IBM. I can't have a notice of instance. Um, have you been able to attend any of the event SIGs? Not that you have to, but it just it just might become a yes. Um, I I wasn't able to yet, yet but I, I was talking with Vibhav the last time, um, and someone at CDCon from Fedora. Uh, one of the projects from Fedora mentioned that, you know, they're doing a lot around cloud events. And then I was like, oh, yes, the event SIG and I should attend this. I then asked when it's happening because I confused the dates. Um, but but Vibha said that, that it happens Tuesday and the next might be happening in July. Yes, I'm looking forward to attending the future because I think those are important also because they are cross projects and how they are using events and the cloud events in their projects. Um, Tara, you are, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, there was, there was London noise. And then I have too many tabs. I have it in my calendar and I haven't been for a few weeks, but I have it on a Monday. So I don't know if you have if you found the CDF calendar, I'll, I'll send you a link to the CDF calendar and we can double check the times for it. Sorry, go on. Um, no, were you saying something? No, no, I was saying that I just wanted to, because I think you said Tuesday, I just wanted you to know. And I think it is not not today, but um, the following way, on my calendar anyways, next week's Monday. All right, thank you for letting me know, Carl. I will. Cool. <laughs> And yeah, so I will also this week, um, I wasn't able to do a lot um, because uh, like I was kind of, <laughs> you know, got really into watching CDCon, but then I thought maybe the weekend I'd be able to do something, but then I had to get my second dose of vaccine, which was so, like the side effects were so worse <laughs> than the first dose. Um, but, but it's fine now and um, this week I'm hoping to accomplish a lot. So, but I'll still do a, a little bit of the demo of how the UI has changed and um, what's new and how the headers are and the event. Um, okay. awesome. That's great. And and right. don't worry about this week, because I mean, I'm sure your work has, has actually moved forward well, but also CDCon was amazing and I'm really glad that you were able to enjoy it. And then I'm also really happy you got your second vaccine. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah. I think my internet is pretty slow. So, you know, the last week, uh, we were sort of thinking about just moving to a way so the users can have the option to select multiple events at a time rather than just, you know, if they wanted to select multiple events, the, the option that was um, in the UI earlier was just all events, but that was not maybe the, the 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 case that we wanted and we wanted to give users the ability to select events on here just clicking on them whatever they they want yep. um, nice that looks good so um just so earlier there was also the all events option which is a still a, a part of it is inside the code which i will remove but uh for the sake of putting it into 
um, the, the Jenkins Contributor Summit and the GitHub at that time, I removed the all events option from here and also the config part of it. Uh, so, you know, um, by default, all of the options will be selected. And if, if you know, over here, all the events will be sent. So we can also try looking at how this is going to look like. Uh, I'm going to save this. And also the default equals true. It wasn't um, working on, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so um, the, the default equals true, not, it wasn't working inside of, uh, inside of jelly file. So what I did was just do like a equals true inside of uh, do you guys see my code, uh, our VS code on the right? Yes. Yeah. So since all events were selected, the two top events are event, um, a, a job created and job updated. So obviously they are not sent because that didn't happen. Uh, but I can also show how they're going to look like. So I know the last time we talked, we were looking at uh, the, the, you know, the type was just earlier. I just had like the type as Jenkins CI yeah, because this was like emanating from Jenkins. I was like, okay. But then I, well, but then uh, Mauricio also suggested changing it. And then I also looked into events from Captain and Tekton uh, and um, Google Event are again, the, the, the type was inclusive of the sort of the URL of where it's um, originating from and the uh, object. So here it's like the queue, here it's um, job. And then obviously the type of the event, so entry waiting, queue left. And they're happening in sequence or you're going to get job started, job completed, job finalized. And if there was a job failed, that would be emitted um, besides job uh, finalized. So if a job had failed, there would be two kinds of events, job finalized and also job failed. Uh, and I can also try doing a little bit of editing this. Uh, so uh, the job updated event um, and similar, I have uh, a computer added and computer, I think failed um, event, but it's in inside of a clone copy that I have because it was a bit different and I did not want to um, change a lot of things over here until I was sure that it is working. But some changes in terms of the jelly you know, I, I had tried a lot of things with Jelly when I was trying to do sort of a repeatable with what I have. So a repeatable here would have looked like, so repeatable would just be this, but this part starting here to, uh, the all the events that would be inside of a repeatable, but that was uh, not working. And then I also tried doing other things like putting this entry fields inside of a different file than the cloud events global config. So everything, the the everything is inside of the global config right now. Like all of the events, the getters and the setters, the the data bound setters, and also logic to make sure that you know since I'm using uh sort of like an event list to so all of the events whichever are true would be put inside of this list of events and then inside of stage is where we would be getting all of those events and then processing it as should this should this uh, event be sent over it has this has this user selected this particular event so all of these configurations for the kind of events, you know, created, updated, all don't doesn't need to be here right now, but I'm not going to comment it out just yet. And uh, other other configurations like sync type and sync URL are also inside of global config. But what I had initially was something like private endpoint and the endpoint class was uh, 
was where all of these events were present and events like created, updated. And this basically had endpoint inside of it, which was being configured in the jelly file. But that was also not working. Uh, I can go back as to show how I was looking at it earlier. So this is the first pull request which I closed because uh, it, it it the it was really different from the other one which is in main right now. So I had something like endpoint list and endpoint, and this was an entire class, which was inside of repeatable, which was working. So it was something like we have the endpoint list, and this is going to be coming from the endpoints variable, and the endpoints variable was basically just a endpoint uh, instance inside of the global config. And the endpoint instance was nothing but just, it had the list of events and it had the sync URL. But it seemed to not work inside this jelly file. So I had to move all of this in the cloud config or like the global config. So if you if you guys have any ideas on, you know, because I I think this is not really clean and we can make it better. And I, I really, really tried with jelly, but there were uh it was showing up in the UI, but the only problem was it was not saving across applies or saves in the UI con configuration. So I had to configure it this way. When I had anything looking like a uh, uh, entry, maybe field equal, and then inside of this one, I have something like F checkbox value equal. I don't remember if it was value exactly, but I I looked at other config files from different plugins, but like this, it it wasn't working, and I'm not exactly sure why because I did try doing it the way other plugins. No other plugin had this sort of inner class configuration in a checkbox, inner class as in, you know, a cloud events, global config holding a reference to an inner class like endpoint and that being configured through Jelly. So they didn't have exactly that, but they had a way of accessing um, like inner variables and inner just maybe like getters and setters. I, I don't really know, but you know, if, if you feel like this is fine, then we can go ahead with it. But I honestly don't really, I'm not really impressed with how the global config is right now. It's just a lot of, just a lot of code in there. And also uh, this, this is sort of the functionality which I had to keep for making sure that the events as like a person is on the UI and as they uncheck the the, the checkbox, you want to make sure that it gets deleted from the um, the events list. So do you guys maybe have any thoughts on this? Sorry, it's so totally okay. If not, we can move ahead with how it's looking. Right now. I mean, if it's if it's working, I, I would li, li, just just move on for now because it, the important thing is to be able to easily configure it and you know not spend too much time on it. Um, what one thing that might it, it, this is totally future, but if you look at like for instance the thin backup plugin, it it doesn't it doesn't have like glo global config like this. It, it, it has kind of its own separate app where it manages settings and it's a better user experience. I, I'm not suggesting you move to that now, but that potentially could be something we look at in the future if there's time. It's, it's just it's just better because all of its settings are on, on one screen all by itself rather than the, if you have a lot of plugins installed, the global config is just, it's a, it's a pain. Um, I, I use the global config for some of the the plugins that I um, created to it. it. It just it just like it just adds to the mess. 
in, in my opinion. But, but I, I, again, I'm not suggesting you change it now, but just something to keep in the back of your mind. If, if you have time later after, after we have all of the like actual cloud event stuff uh, working and, and GSOC is now. We can, um, I think like um, I'll be really interested in looking into it. Uh, can you maybe send a link to it in the Slack channel? Yeah. Um, and also, Jeff, your idea on uh, interfacing the common methods inside of, um, like, uh, outside of different models, you know, build model and job model to sort of get the source and type for cloud events. I think it worked really beautifully. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's a lot more cleaner. And it, I think, you know, this piece of code, it's a lot more also elegant than like using all those elifs, it, it would have gotten very, very <clears throat> huge because there would have been different event listeners, of course. So I think it's a good oh, oh, Good, I'm, I'm glad it was helpful. Yeah, so it works very really nicely. Let's see. The interface query. Um, yeah, so, so some of the changes over onto tasks, um, so I'll just the, the unit testing, um, some changes to just the, how stage was running to you know, sort of make it a bit more cleaner, I guess. And I'm still, in, um, as I add the, the, fourth event listener, the computer listener, I'm thinking of dividing this a stage between different classes for each listener each. So like a job listener would have a stage as we talked about last time, because it's make, it's going to just make more sense when it's divided and um, it's, not, it's not going to be super confusing, I think. Um, yeah, those were the changes for um, this week. Again, as I said, not not a lot of um, work done, but but I'm hoping that starting this week um, can get more accomplished and then start doing more work in terms of writing more tests and also just writing the implementation for Jenkins as a thing, which I've started looking. Um, so I think it should be good. This is a great start. Thank you. Good work, as always. Did you have any any additional questions on how to move forward? Or are you comfortable with what you need to do next? Um, I think I'm pretty sure on what I need to do next. Um, but maybe one question would be when we are implementing uh, Jenkins as a sync, um, I am guessing that like the project, it just needs to remain inside of this as like a global config. Would I'm just thinking, would we need to have any UI input when we're talking about Jenkins as a sync? Like would users need to configure anything like, okay, here's what we'll be sending events to you. We, like Jenkins will be receiving events from um, so and so, like this particular URL or this particular client, or is it just, you know, no config in terms of no code or no config in terms of the UI, but Jenkins just receives a certain event. It gets going to parse for whether it's a structured kind of a cloud event or a binary cloud. Event. And then depending on that, uh, event metadata, it can extract the type and then 
uh, trigger that particular uh, the, the particular action that it needs to do. Did we talk about um, authentication, whether we, we want to, to make sure that we, we trust the source that's sending us events or is, is the, the thought just anybody that, that has the URL can send them? Um, I don't think that we talked about it yet, um, but I think that's a very good idea and also like a very important implementation. Um, I think like what we initially did was we said, okay, let's start with Jenkins as a source. So we did not go into a lot of conversation with Jenkins as a sync, but now since the time is um, approaching to implement it, uh, I think we are starting to think. So yes, thinking about authentication or whether or not this particular URL or this particular just project can send us events or not, I think that's really important. and. I think I should start looking into. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure what 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 that what the options are for that. That that I mean that that's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head that might require some kind of UI. There there might be other stuff, but nothing comes to mind. Um, I I don't I don't know that we we need. Well, I mean, if we have depending on how how flexible the authentication is, that it, it might include um you know. Uh, um, permissions about like types of events that can be consumed or something. So I, I don't I don't know if, if some sort of webhook interface would would work here or whether there's better technology. This is a, a little bit outside of stuff I, I've worked on. Yeah, um, I've been thinking about just uh, uh, UI changes too, and like what I I was maybe thinking of is that Jenkins, yes, only receives a certain, because, you know, the last we were talking and Mauricio mentioned that it, it's the duty of the sync to decide whether or not the sync wants to work with a certain kind of event. So maybe that's, um, uh, wait, do you want to say something? Okay, that, that I was thinking this. My impression is that a sync's job is to determine whether or not they want to receive the event, essentially ascribe to, subscribe to it. But Beyond that, I don't know how much, I don't know how much um, control or, or programming that happens. I think it's like you subscribe to the events that you want to be in. And then this goes down the chain that the events themselves are emitted. And then there's a question of who subscribes and then each person who subscribes or each service <laughs> uh, or think that they have their own like service will decide how to handle that, the message from the event. The data from the event. Yeah, that, that's that's probably all that's required for this. I, I was just thinking about like like in, in GitHub their their web hook UI, you can grant permissions to different types of things, but but just because that, I, I, it's not clear to me that we need that here. Um, just just like like you're allowed to send me events or or you're not, it would would make me happy. We can think more about it and start with a basic implementation. Yeah. Um, as we move forward. So do we still like think that when we are saying that um, the, the sync decides what to do with the event, do we, is all of that, is it going to be inside the logic or should we move some of that to like the UI code? So UI has a bunch of events uh, for example, uh, um, also the above sent me this the event say vocabulary, which is going to standardize sort of what each event means and what each event should be doing. Uh, so if we're thinking in terms of that, maybe when someone says, okay, resource has been created, what Jenkins wants to do is run a um, a particular job. So uh, mm -hmm. you enter the URL of that. Not maybe not the URL, but maybe just the host of that sync or the source, not the sync, I'm sorry, the source, which is emitting the event. And then the, the user can also select what events are coming in from that particular source. So our logic will only work on doing that particular or just emitting those particular actions or just doing those particular jobs that it needs to do when it's receiving those particular events. Right. Yeah, I think that sounds quite good. Or 
are the, can you think of um, actions that Jenkins could do other than running running a job? Yeah. Yes, actually, that was um, a conversation that I had in the Jenkins Contributor Summit. I was like, you know, when uh -huh. we're thinking of actions, it's more just like when I am thinking of it, it's more like, you know, a running job or like run a uh, start or complete or just end a job or something like that. But then I uh, mentioned to Vibhav that we need to think outside of these actions and maybe think of, again, going back to that vocabulary, we need to think of running some standardized actions like starting a new node, starting um, a new or something like that, which is just outside of the general scope when the events are just standardized as a uh, the, the vocabulary has certain events like, I don't exactly remember right now, but it, it had something like resource created and um, resource updated. So what maybe what we might want to do is have a job which is going to test the availability or just test the um, stability of that particular maybe project or that particular, you know, something similar to that. So I think that having part of it moved to the UI and just selecting which event slash events are emitted from that host or from that source might help us reduce some complexity in the logic since we'll not be putting in a lot of, okay, if the event is this and this or this and then do this and maybe that's what I am thinking, but I'm not sure if that's the right way to think. And this may be something that I will need input from the entire like team and hearing your guys' idea on what you think the implementation can look like and maybe in what the end product is just going to be a mixture of all of our ideas. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I like, I like what I, I haven't spent much time thinking about this, but I, I kind of like the, 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 the direction you're going from what you've said. I mean, you get a particular event, you, you might want to run a job. And so there, there's other things you might actions you might want to take. You get a particular event, you might want to Create, you might want to start a node or stop a node or, or, or something. Um, um, you could maybe, maybe, there could maybe be an event that like creates a user. There, so there, there are maybe some other actions that you might want to do. So I, I, the flexible model makes sense to me. Maybe I'll also like start researching different actions because kind of, I'm still not really sure about, I still like know of actions as a Jenkins user but I need to go and look more into the documentation and just understand the scope of different actions and what um, they all tie into. We'll just mm -hmm. have there is also a Jenkins pipeline authoring SIG, which is different, but they might very well have ideas on all the different things that might be happening that you could be doing within a pipeline. You know, this, this type of question, I'm just thinking, Reading the docs is very good, and but it can be a bit, you know, it might be interesting for you to ask a wider range of people as well. Um, all right, sounds really good. And that was the only question that's in my head right now. Um, and as more pop up, I will put them in the chat. Just a heads up that the first and only evaluation, the, the midpoint evaluations for this summer's GSOC, will be between July 12th and July 16th. And it basically is the mentors and students submit their evaluations of one another. So the mentor team will submit one and then you submit one, Shruti. And what we have always done with the Jenkins Shusop is we do student presentations at this stage. And this happens at a Jenkins main gap, which is especially planned for this. As we are taking part in GSOC this year under the CDF umbrella, we would likely do this under the CDF foundation. So there will be a CDF type of meetup, but it will be the same idea where all the GSOC students do say a 15 minute presentation and then five minutes Q and A. And we have six, so we're going to be about two hours, but so a couple of questions. We are thinking that the possibility of having them pre-recorded or live is a good one. Usually they were live, but mm -hmm. Just because I, I I don't know I think pre-recorded can be quite good especially if we're asking for only fifteen minutes so there's that and then mm -hmm. the other thing is so the week of the evaluations themselves are between the twelfth and the sixteenth but we can do this presentation either before during that week or after and I just wanted to ask you Shruti if you had a preference. Uh, 
I, th I can do before. Uh, so like when we say before, do we just like mean the week before I can yeah. maybe like send a recording, um, you know, like the week before, maybe midweek, like a Wednesday or Thursday, does that sound okay? Yes. So, yes. So in which case, if you, if you want to do it recorded, that, and that's absolutely fine. Um, if you send it the prior week, so before the 12th, then we will likely have that meetup, of course, after that. So it will be, it'll just be a matter of, of gathering. And But that sounds good to me. So then we'll either run the meetup itself, either at the end of that week, right before evaluations, or during the evaluation week. Does that sound good? Is there is there anything happening that week that would make it hard for you to attend. I just wanted you to be able to be part of it, you know, if you have any family events or anything. Um, no, there's nothing that I know of that's happening and I should be available. Okay. Um, and I, it also sounds really exciting. So yes. <laughs> okay, good, excellent. And we'll be sending out more information about the exact time of it. I just have to discuss with everyone. Good, yeah, really looking forward to it. It should be lots of fun. The presentation's are always good. and. It, it's amazing the work that's being done so and your work is awesome so i'm very excited for your presentation <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i really only have like jenkins as a source um done right now i'm not really sure if this is enough or should i maybe like add bits and add since you know we are talking about starting going into Jenkins as a sink and I can see what gets done by that point and put that into the presentation if it's looking okay of course but what we have right now is that okay is that enough yeah it's great your work so far has been amazing you, you're doing yeah. fantastic and I'm, I'm yeah, sure this... you know it will progress in the next 10 days too but what you've done so far is fantastic yeah, this is one of one of the the best projects I've I've been on. I mean, I've been on, I forget I've been on like just just a few, two or three, um, but just been been really easy and doing lots of work and and keeping contact with the mentor. So, you know, and I, I had somebody that just sort of would sort of disappear and and <laughs> didn't see him for a week and that and um, but yeah, it's it's all good. Thank you. So I'm excited for that. Uh, and okay, so the recording you said 15 minutes, and that just it should it be like demo plus also like talking about the project in general, like the collaboration of say Jenkins with cloud events and how that's going to help interoperability in general, and also just extend, you know, to since you know the whole idea of cloud native and standardizing events across different systems. I'm just thinking of thinking of that, uh, and I think both is okay. Yeah, I think that sounds really interesting, and it makes the subject more accessible to people who are maybe not looking in this space, and so it kind of gives some context for them, which and it gives a sense of why this is super interesting, which is always nice. But make sure you have enough time to present the, the work that you're doing because this is really for you to share, you know, your work as well. But it is good to put context in if you have time. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you. Thank you very much, Rishi. So great, we can wrap up the meeting now and see you all in one week's time, but we'll be in contact on Slack. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.